Hello, welcome back. I'm at the Precious Metals Conference with Martin Cheren, the CEO of FPX Nickel. Martin, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, Peter. No problem. Um, let's just start off, quick overview, what's the company? Yeah, so we're FPX Nickel. We're based in Vancouver, Canada. We trade on the TSX Venture Exchange. We also trade in the US on the OTC QB. And we're focused on the development of a very large nickel deposit. It's a PEA stage deposit going into PFS. Uh, also located in BC, and it's one of the largest undeveloped nickel deposits in the world. Awesome. Okay. Uh, before we go into the, the projects and the, the economics, the metallurgy and everything else, uh, just, just a quick reminder of the capital structure as it stands at the moment, sort of things like market cap, cash in the bank, uh, shares outstanding. That, that's yeah, cool. shares outstanding is just about $216 million. Uh, company's actually been public since 1996, and, and we've never done a rollback or consolidation of stocks, so we've always been focused on managing the, the capital structure and keeping the number of shares outstanding as low as possible. Uh, current market capitalization is around 120 million Canadian, uh, so the share price around 50, 55 cents Canadian as we speak. Uh, cash in the bank is just under 10 million Canadian, so we're fully funded for this year and well into next year as well. Good, okay. Let's touch on, I, I wanted to draw back to 2020 when you released the PEA, because obviously, you're, like you said, you're working on PFS now, but they're the economics we have to date. Um, the the, the post-tax MPV around 100, maybe actually before, I won't go into it, you tell us what the economics were and then we, then we can go from there. Sure. So that 2020 PEA was modeled on a nickel price of about seven. It was modeled on a nickel price of 7.75 per pound nickel. You know, today nickel is trading at about 11 dollars a pound. Um, that study yielded a post-tax NPV of 1.7 billion US. So versus our current market capitalization, we traded a multiple of about 0.05, 0.05 against our NAV or our net asset value. So we certainly see the stock as being kind of, uh, let's just say, reasonably priced today. And can you just give us a bit more sense of actually what what's the capital cost for the what's the what's what's the actual provide us a bit more in terms of life of mine and yeah. the payback and, and and really what what is the actual bulk of it in terms sure of so capex is high this is a very large project it would be one of the 10 largest nickel mines in the world the capital in that study was about 1.7 billion us uh, coincidentally about the same as the npv uh, annual production would be in the range of 100 million pounds of nickel per year so at today's nickel price, we'd be generating over a billion dollars US per year of top line revenue. Um, um, you know, in terms of the payback, uh, payback is four years and uh, the mine life is 35 years. So one of the ratios we like to look at is the, the ratio of the mine life to the payback. So ideally with any mining project, you'd want the mine life to be as long as possible, the payback to be as short as possible. And on that metric, we actually rank as one of the best base metal projects anywhere in the world. Awesome. What's the, what's the next steps of the company? You're talking about this PFS that you're working on now. How far along is that? And um, I wouldn't mind actually touching on a bit of the metallurgy as well, because I assume that you're baking that into the PFS too. Yeah, so the PFS, you know, we've done the infill drilling there. We'll have a mineral resource estimate update here in the coming months. Um, so putting sort of a pin in the resource, which is great. Um, the big focus for us has been sort of twofold beyond that. One has been on metallurgical test programs. So we're about 75% of the way through an 18-month MET program uh, that will, by the end of it, have treated about 25 tons of material, including around 17 tons in a pilot plant, which is currently operational. So this is the scale of MET program you might more, more normally associate with a feasibility stage project, but we've really taken on you know, the, the, the responsibility to, to kind of do our de-risking de in a way that we believe a major company would de-risk an asset of this, of this kind. Uh, those, those results of that metallurgical test work have been you know, put in the market on the first two phases and the third phase will come out later this, later this year and so far so good there. The other aspect of what we've been doing in preparation for that pre-feasibility study has been a series of engineering trade-off studies looking at different options for the crushing and grinding circuit, uh, tailings deposition, etc. And so that will place us on a good footing to, to start on that PFS already with a very good, strong sense of what the economics and the, the sort of the, the, uh, the, the development plan already looks like. Awesome. Um, you mentioned there that you're doing something that obviously that you'd be doing at a later stage at sort of feasibility study with a pilot plan. Um, would you, at the moment with the market cap where it is and, and sort of where you are in terms of your NAV ratio, is it, I mean, it wouldn't be a great time to, to look for a JV, I guess, or, or someone, but have you ever thought about that as, a, as an option in terms of maybe getting a major involved with the focus? 
it's a world-class asset. I'm sure people must be interested in this type of thing. They, they absolutely are. Um, and, you know, we think that's probably most likely the ultimate destiny for this is that it would be taken out and, and developed and constructed and operated by a major mining company. And that's really what guides our work programs is to ensure that as we go through due diligence with those counterparties that uh, we're, that the project withstands that from the, 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 the in, from the standpoint of the technical quality of the work that we're putting into it. Um, you know, frankly, those are inbounds that we're that we're entertaining right now around things like potentially an equity investment from a from a larger mining company who would potentially take a toehold position. The other part, I think, in some ways, the most interesting part of my job over the last 18 months has been our engagement with uh, downstream participants in the EV battery supply chain. Right, the people that need nickel to build batteries. So that's the chemical companies, the battery companies, and indeed the automotive OEMs themselves. And so we've had very fruitful engagement with those groups. And where we see that going is that going forward, we believe that those groups will, will actually be making equity investments in companies like FPX and others who are developing critical minerals uh, projects. Um, you know, the Volkswagen CEO was recently in Canada and is on the record saying that they want to invest in Canadian mines and Canadian mining uh, companies. And based on the evidence that we see in our discussions with those types of counterparties, we believe that that very much is going to be coming to, to, to the market, and we, we believe FPX could, could be a beneficiary of that going forward. I just want to run back onto the PEA, because it's, it's something I wanted to run through. Was obviously You mentioned there that you, you based it on around $7.75 um, at nickel price. Yeah. Did you do any sensitivity testing on what it could be at today's prices at all? Yeah, I think that you know, sensitivities would have gone up 20% you know, over that number, so you know, something in the range of sort of $10 a pound, and you know, you're adding... For, for each sort of dollar of nickel, you're adding you know several hundred millions of dollars of NPV to the project. The project is actually, it, it is of course levered to the metal price as, a, as any project is, but it's not as highly levered as, as, as you might think. This is not like a high cost optionality type project where that metal input price really leads to high leverage both to the upside and the downside based on the metal price assumption. As a low-cost project, while we benefit from higher nickel prices um, and we see that upside leverage, it's not the type of leverage that you would find uh, in, in a higher-cost project. And you know, frankly, obviously, we'd rather have a lower-cost project. And so, that while the leverage is there, it's 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 actually relatively modest. How does um, how much how does permitting work with a project? Do you have to do the PFS first before you can start sorting out your EIA, or, or is that something that you've already started? Excellent question. So, yeah, there's a perception sometimes in the market that you need to have a certain level of feasibility, pre-fees or feasibility study. It's somewhat d disconnected from that. What you need to have is a robust set of environmental baseline studies, and you need to understand the footprint or the likely footprint of your, of your site. Uh, whether that comes with a pre-feasibility or not, sometimes that those, those things can be developed in parallel, even though they're not contained within a pre-feasibility study as such. Um, in terms of when we enter that process, they would start with what's called a project description. That's where you're uh, you know, uh, alerting the regulators to the project. You're describing the, the likely footprint of the project. You're also needing to work very closely with your indigenous partners on what that looks like. And typically, from the time of submission of that, it's about a three-year process to getting to uh, uh, what's called the environmental assessment certificate, which then puts you on the precipice of being fully permitted. Uh, we have not guided the market yet on exactly when we expect to enter into that, and it's really going to depend on a multitude of factors, and, but it's something that we certainly envision within the next few years. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So you had some news recently to uh, use a hydromet to produce nickel sulfate on site. Could you essentially tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so the 2020 PEA that we produce is based on the idea of producing nickel in concentrate. Um, what this recent body of work, this internal scoping study was focused on is what does the incremental operation look like to go from concentrate to battery grade nickel sulfate, whether that facility is at our site or potentially at an off-site location. Um, what that study showed in a very fairly robust technical news release we put out recently is that this would be the largest producer of nickel sulfate anywhere in the world. So we'd be producing you know, around 44,000 tons of nickel contained in nickel sulfate, which is the, the key chemical that goes into the cathode of the battery. 
Um, and, and we believe based on our, the comparability of our refinery to other refineries that have been built in recent years, this would be a relatively low capex, low opex operation. It's something that we will fold into the, to our pre-feasibility study so people can understand the economics of it. But at a high level, production of low cost, low carbon, battery grade nickel sulfate in North America, I think really st highlights st the strategic uh, advantages of the project. What's the, um, what's the th rough difference in price from selling, say, a concentrate to the, to the actual battery grade sulfate? It, it really depends what type of concentrate you're talking about. For our concentrate, which is a very high nickel content, it contains over 60% nickel. Mm -hmm. You know, payabilities for that can be in the range of 95% plus of the LME nickel price. So it's, it's far more, uh, it's far higher than what a typical, typical nickel sulfide concentrate payability is. Mm -hmm. Nickel sulfate has tended to train, trade in a range of 10 to 20 percent over and above the LME nickel price in recent years. So there is a real prize there to upgrading the, project, the product all the way to that sulfate. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And I wanted to look at more of a regional um, size of it because obviously it isn't just Baptiste. You, you have the, a, a pretty large land package from memory. Yeah. What's, um, and I think that's quite attractive because obviously when you're looking at the projects at the moment, you've got fantastic economic short, you're progressing this development play. But it's not just Baptiste, there's, there's lots of nickel around you. What, what's the, I guess in your mind, how much of a priority is it to now go and look and, and see what else is around you? Yeah, it's a good point. So Baptiste sits within a, a project footprint we call the Dakar Nickel District, and it truly is a district or camp scale land package. It covers almost 250 square kilometers. Baptiste is the most advanced of the deposits there, again, going into the pre-feasibility study phase. But we believe, based on drilling we've done at some of the other targets, that there's potential for multiple of these large-scale nickel deposits to be delineated. Our focus in recent years, over the last two years, has been on drilling at the Van target, where we made a major new nickel discovery last year. We did step-out drilling this year to expand the footprint of that burgeoning deposit. And we will return again in ensuing years to, to understand how much nickel we have there. The hypothesis is that Van could host the deposit that is potentially higher grade or larger than Baptiste. And so while we continue to move Baptiste through, um, you know, feasibility work, et cetera, uh, we think it's important to, you know, to poke around, to do some drilling at relatively modest cost to understand the scale of the total nickel endowment. Ultimately, we believe this will be a nickel camp that rivals places like Sudbury and other sort of world famous nickel camps in terms of the total uh, nickel endowment there. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, and just, I guess, to just to finish things off, I mean, Obviously, you've got the PFS coming out. Um, what else can we expect over, say, the next six, 12 months that should excite people and add, add some more value to this company? Yeah, a big thing is really the results of that metallurgical test work, including that pilot plant, which we expect to put out in the fourth quarter of this year. Mm -hmm. Further work to demonstrate our ability to produce nickel, battery grade nickel sulfate. We'll have an updated mineral resource estimate at Baptiste. We'll also have the results of that step out program at Van. So a lot to look for. And then some potential for sort of wild cards around the, on the strategic side as well. So uh, yeah, certainly a very exciting time to be in nickel, to be in North America, and to be sort of very much part of that EV uh, thematic. Awesome. Martin, thank you. Thanks, Peter.